In this video, we will try to resurrect an old by time ruined axe. It has been on the ground for decades or maybe even hundreds of years. Maybe even the Vikings were fighting with this axe. There is a very large layer of rust and several holes in it. We have a few days of work ahead of us, so let's get started. Using a screwdriver, we can try to remove large pieces of rust. It worked sometimes, but not all the time. This rust has turned out to be very durable. Inside the hole it's even worse, it's half filled with some kind of clay, oh, I'd even say cement. So that I wouldn't have to dirt in my home, we went outside and I took a small hammer which I hoped would help us. In the end it was successful, but very difficult. Then we bought a grip that can hold the axe firmly and safely for further manipulation. In the process we bought a chisel, otherwise you can't get into the hole. And that did bring us results. This fire also helped us to make the inner part smoother. But it's still not what we needed. Evening was approaching, and at this rate we would be banging into the axe for a very long time in order to get to the metal. And then we remembered one of our old life hacks. Remember how I removed the rust with vinegar? Well, that's gonna come in handy. This is something like vinegar, but a little stronger. We left our axe in this liquid overnight, so the acid can wash away the rust. It wasn't possible to cover the entire axe with vinegar, but in the morning we just turned it over. After a few minutes, there were bubbles. So we understood that the reaction has begun. And that lasted until the morning, it looks like the axe is being fried. And the next day we saw this. The rust did not disappear from the axe. But we hope that at least the structure of it became weaker, so we turned the X to the other side and left it there for a few hours. Then we went outside again, but this time armed with a wire brush. At first glance nothing happens. At first glance nothing happens, the rust smears a little and the metal is still not visible. But after adding some water, we saw it! Here's the metal! Look how much work the vinegar did overnight. Although it didn't wash away all the rust, it probably destroyed the most durable part. Look, here's some kind of a symbol, we'll clean it a bit more later. In the end we have an axe that's not in such a bad condition anymore. And you know what? Let's try a little more intense stream of water. So, yes, it did help a bit. Great, all that remains is to insert the wooden handle and it will be all done. I'm kidding. We will try to do everything more nicely. A grindstone will now help us with our struggle. And as you can see, the metal turned out to be very strong. Even the grindstone is having a lot of difficulty grinding away the layers. We still have a long way to go to get rid of these pits. Then we bought a new disc and it went a bit better. By the way, during the filming of this video, we had to go to the tool shop about 5 or 6 times. We always needed something. And all those journeys took a lot of time as well. Unfortunately, the sharp edge of the axe was highly damaged and the best solution was to simply cut off the damaged part. Now we're grinding the cutting part of the axe. The pits on the edge are very deep, and in order to cut them off, I would have to cut off about half of the axe. So that's why we decided to leave a few. It seems to me that it adds a nice look to our axe as well. So another day passed. 
Next to the brand name, we found a number 3. I don't know what it means, but it was all under that layer of rust. Which was impossible without the life hack and damaging the number itself. We put the axe in the same solution for another night. In the morning, there wasn't much foam, but these strange bubbles that formed around the upper metal part. The number and the letters are much more visible now. We clean the axe with a brush and let's go outside again. The further we go, the more we have to be careful not to leave big scratches. But I'm still not happy with the pits on the edge of the axe. I think it spoils the whole look of the axe. It is possible to cut off another piece of the axe, but that would be a bit too much. That's why I decided to take a risk and found my old welding machine, in order to fill this pit with metal. But that was a bit risky. On the edge the metal is very thin and it would be easier to make another hole in the axe and that would be even worse. But fortunately I succeeded. And then, with the help of the grindstone, we gently restore everything to its original state. Now it's time to finish the blade, so I was hoping this grindstone would help me with that. Next is to add shine to our axe. We did the final polish with the help of a special paste. But the machine turned out to be a little too weak for this disc, so the speed was declining. Then I made a device with the help of a screw, thanks to which the blade can now be put on an ordinary drill. The drill already has enough power and it was much more comfortable to work with now. But during polishing, I remember that after welding, the tip of the axe was slowly cooling off. Meaning that the metal becomes much more brittle and soft. I had to fix that. We lit a fire with coal and placed the tip of the axe there to keep it warm. Next we quickly placed the axe in water to allow the metal to cool off quickly and become much stronger. Look at this wonderful rainbow that appeared here. We're going to try to remove it with the help of the same disc. Now it's time for the handle we found in the store. We wrapped the axe in foil in order for the metal not to be scratched during further work. We do the same with the handle. There was one cut on it for attachment, but it seemed too little to us, so we decided to add two more cuts using this saw. We connect the two parts of our axe really like an axe. To prevent the handle from flying out of the axe, we must pour glue there. And then fit in these wedges. As a result, the upper part becomes much wider than the hole in the metal part and thus should not fall on anyone's head. We cut off the leftovers and in the end it looks like this. To make this axe even safer, we'll do this. We will find a place for two future openings and we'll make them with a drill. I don't know why, but making holes in the metal brings me special joy. We made two holes of different diameters, and now we put two rods in them. They need to be thrusted into the axe and gently pushed onto the ends. This gives us certainty that it will not fall out. Because we want this to not be only a beautiful axe, but also a functional one. Now only little more work remains. Let's remove the tape and paint our wooden handle. 
It will protect it from moisture and pests. After a few days of work, RX is finally ready. I think it turned out very well. It could have continued to rot somewhere in the soil until it completely disintegrated. But we raised her from the dead and gave her a second life. Maybe in 100 years some other video blogger will find it and fix her again. Well, let's test it out. Although it seems to me that it's not completely intended for wood, it does manage quite well. Just out of curiosity, we try to chop a can of Coca-Cola, and it's split into two parts as if it was cut by a laser beam. The X really quite seems to be wonderful. I hope you enjoy the video, and if you, like me, enjoy the process, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon so you don't miss our new videos.